Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In today's video, I'm going to show you a powerful technique in Power BI that allows you to compare sales or any other data for that matter across multiple years for the same date range using just a simple date slicer. Ever wondered how your sales this month compare to the same period in previous years? Or maybe you want to track performance for a specific date range across different years without having to manually adjust your filters? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to dynamically display sales for the same month and day across all years in your dataset, giving you deeper insights for year over year comparisons and helping you make informed decisions. Let me give you a quick demo of what I'm talking about. Let's say you have a slicer here and you want to compare your quarter sales across all the different years. Now let me select 1st of January as my start date and my end date here is going to be the 31st of March and this is my complete first quarter and then click on apply. And now you're able to see the sales amount here across all the years for first quarter. Now let's say for example, you just want to compare first 10 days of the month of May across different years. You can simply do that. I can select first and then select 10 here and then click on apply. You are now able to see the sales for 1st May to 10th May across all the years and you can also see the pattern here and the trend across the years. I don't have any sales data here for 2023. That is why this is just playing blank. So I'm going to teach you how to do this. So let's get started. Let me show you the data model that I have here. I have a orders fact table here and then I have a calendar table. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a copy of the calendar table. So let's click on the calendar table here. If you don't know how to create a calendar table, there's a video on my channel. I will leave a link to that video in the description below. Please do check it out and then let's go to the report view and then go to the modeling tab, click on new table. I'm going to paste the code that I just copied here and then underscore I'm going to create a copy of this and then click on confirm. I now have another calendar table in my model and I would like to leave this as a disconnected table and then let's go back to our report view. So let's start by adding in the slicer to our report. I'm going to add in the date picker visual that I have here and then I'm going to bring in the date field from my calendar copy table. Remember that this is a disconnected table. Date field that I have added in the slicer here is from the calendar copy table. This is a disconnected table so make sure you use the date field from the calendar copy table. Now let's quickly add a column chart here and then I'm going to bring in the date field from my calendar table and remember that this calendar table is connected to my fact table here. So I'm going to bring in the date from my calendar table and then I'm going to bring in the sales field that I have into my y-axis just so that I'm creating a visual here and then let's quickly add data labels to this. So now I have this visual created and if I select any values here this is not going to filter because this field here is from a disconnected table. And now it's time for us to create a measure. I'm going to create a new measure. Let's call this measure as selected date sales and then I'm going to start by using the calculate function. Within the calculate function, I'm going to use the sum function here to sum my sales field. If you already have a measure created, you can simply pass in the measure here followed by a comma. And now I'm going to use the filter function and I'm going to pass in my calendar table that I have, which is the connected table here followed by a comma. And then firstly, I would want to filter the visual by month. So I'm going to use the month function here and pass in the date field from my calendar table. Close the brackets here and then say is equals to I'm going to use the month function here. Within the month function, I'll use the max function to get the max date that we have selected from the slicer here and then pass in the date field of the calendar copy table. Close the bracket here. Close the bracket again. Now that we have applied the month filter, we also need to apply the filter for date as well. So I'm going to use an AND function here, which is represented by double ampersand. I'm going to use the day function here and pass in the date from my calendar table and then say is greater than or equals to and then I'm going to use the day function again. Let me bring this on the next line so that you can see this better and then say minimum of the I would like to first identify what is the minimum date that we have selected from our slicer and then pass in the date here of the calendar copy close the bracket close the bracket again and then there is another function here that I will have to use so I'm going to use double ampersand again and this time I'm going to copy this entire line here and then paste this and then say less than or equals to day and then change the min here to max I'm going to close the bracket here to close the filter function and then close the bracket again here to close the calculate function. 
and then let's click on commit here and then now going to bring in the measure that we have created selected date for sales into my y axis here and you will see that and let me get rid of some of sales and you will see that it is now displaying the data here for all the years now let's say for example you just want to take a look at the first 10 days of the month of may and then i'm going to select the range here and then click on apply and now you can see that our five day sales is being displayed on this visual here across the years and you can see that the growth happened from 2020 to 20 2021 and then the growth happened in 2022 as well ignore the 2023 because i don't have the data here for 2023 and then you can see that there's a decline in the year 2024 now one thing to note here is that the month filter that is applied in this logic here basically is only for one month if you would like to select multiple months then all you have to do is copy this particular dax code here and let me move this on to the next line paste the dax code and then say is greater than equals to and then change this from max to min and then change this from equals to to less than equals to and then make sure to add double ampersand here again and then click on confirm and now you will be able to see the data here for multiple months on this visual and now you can select the date range here of your choice and then click on apply and now you'll be able to see the sales data here across multiple years so with this we've come towards the end of this tutorial i hope you enjoyed this tutorial you learned something new today please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials